All right, thanks for tuning in to our preview of the 152nd Open Championship from Royal Troon in Scotland. Joining Jared and I this week, Hall of Fame golfer Jan Stevenson, who's going to help us uh, dissect the major golf course she has played before, because she's played everywhere, uh, with holes uh, that have nicknames like the Posted Stamp and the Railway. Here on Tee Off with Jan Stevenson. So uh, the gang's all back together again. Jan, good to have you on again. Uh, our last major of 2024. Yeah, thank you. It's great to be here. This one is always a different major than the others, you know, because you have so many different European players as well playing. And and um, I actually think, I keep saying this, I think it's, it's a weak field as far as American players, but um, it's, it's still fun to watch because of the weather. Yeah, and uh, that is obviously a big story, um, and uh, we might as well get right to it. So what's the uh, forecast? And we'll have a link in the description. You can check out mm -hmm. uh, windfinder.com, but uh, which uh, Jared uses to check out the conditions, especially overseas. So, Jared, what's, uh, what are the conditions, and also uh, do the conditions favor, because we have the tee times out, so that they favor right. uh, a tee time grouping, either a.m., p.m., or p.m., a.m.? Well, I mean, we should definitely say that we're recording this on Tuesday morning, so this could and probably will change. Like, I'm going to check this Wednesday night and kind of, you know, go based on that. That'll be the most accurate forecast we get. But as of now, I mean, well, Jan was saying before we went live that it actually looks like nice weather for Scotland, like 60, 65 degrees, just a little bit of rain. The, the wind doesn't look crazy. Like, I'm seeing, like, kind of 10 to 15 mile per hour steady wind with gusts up to, like, 25. As of now, it looks like the p.m. a.m. stacks would have the best of the weather because the wind's going to kind of die down Thursday afternoon and then kind of be calmer Friday morning and pick up Friday afternoon. So if things stand how the forecast currently is, um, the later you go out on Thursday, the better. All right. Let me, uh, Jan, you could explain even that a little bit more as I pop up uh, that tea time grouping so let me go ahead and uh, just put this up as big as I can so everybody can check it out. Uh, all right, so we're gonna go to, I'm going to go to PM. Let's see, where does PM start here? So PM usually starts, starts like the, then they have an A and they have an A and a B and PM and the AM. So the top players always get the earliest of the PM and the latest of the AMs. So yeah, they always have the best, you know, and then they reshuffle every I think six to ten tournaments, but. Um, so obviously the top players get the best tee times, but when you're playing in Europe, well, hold on one second before you go, Jan, cause I get a, cause there's no, usually you see a AM and then there's a two hour break and there's a PM. There's no yep. break here. So when, what will be considered the, like, you know, cause it starts. At PM, the PM is usually, um, like 12, 12 o'clock, 1240. Okay. I would, so I would just me... scroll, I would just scroll down to the very bottom, Greg. Cause again, the way the weather is right now, the later you go out the better and yeah there, there is no, there's no there's no like you said greg there's no gap between them because for the open everyone tees off the first hole too there's okay no there's no guys teeing off the 10th to start on thursday or friday oh wow that's interesting all right yeah. so here we go Jan, go ahead before i interrupted you now and we'll i'll slide down and everybody can see what we're looking at here well and i guess the other thing i could say about a, a late early is that when when you go to Europe, you know, because you've got it, you, you always we have to allow for you, you get up three hours before your tea time. So when you have an early tea time in Europe, it usually means you've got to get up like at two in the morning. And if you can't get to sleep, which it typically does, if you only just come over from America, it's really hard when you have an early late. So the late early have the advantage of being able to play, even if they didn't sleep well, they get to have all of that time. Um, you know, then they can turn around and, and they're so tired, then they'll go to sleep and get up early. But it's it it's actually the players think more about tea times than I think anyone even really notices. I mean, we're always going, oh, I got the I got the worst of the weather. Or I got the bad tea times. And and it's a big deal because, you know, just that extra couple of hours sleep makes a big difference. But I mean, these guys, anyone that played in played in Europe last week is, is a big advantage because when you come, when I used to go to the British, if I didn't play the week before, I played horrible because I just could not get to sleep. And then you'd have to, like I said, get up at two in the morning. So uh, tea times in Europe, it's a bigger deal than anywhere else because you're having to get up so early. 
All right, so we're right now. I've scrolled. We're at about 148 tea times, and so far, uh, obviously, everybody's been able to see this. But uh, you know, like Scotty Scheffler needs all the breaks he can get. We know that. <laughs> so Scheffler yeah. is part of the afternoon wave on uh, Thursday. So he's in the lucky again. If the weather holds, he's on the lucky tea time uh, part. So he's got Spieth and Cameron Young joining him. Uh, Batia, and we're going to get to picks in a little bit as well. Uh, Batia is there. Lowry, Fitzpatrick, Cam Smith. That's a grouping. Morikawa, Burns, Siwoo. Tiger, Shoffley, Cantley. So that's uh, an afternoon. And so is Clark, Matsuyama, and Kepka. So there you go. So let's, uh, uh, most of so these now. Yeah, so Rory, Rory and Bryson have earlier tea times. Those are the two, the two, you know, and I guess, and Ram. Ram as well. So those are the three big names with the early tea times. Okay, mm-hmm. so let's go ahead now then. And as we start, we're getting into the morning now. Is These are potentially uh, the bad uh, groups based on the weather. All right, do you guys? Which can change in Europe very quickly. Yep. So that's why you want to check out and uh, bookmark the link that we give you. So there's Keegan and Zalatoris at 1020. We're going to get into Keegan. Actually, we might as well get into Keegan now. So what did you think about when Keegan was announced as the Ryder Cup, Kath and Jan? Well, it was quite a shock. I mean, I really like Keegan. And typically when they have a captain, they usually are pretty much almost semi-retired. They're still playing a little bit, you know, like Zach Johnson and and um, some of the Luke Donald, where they're, they're kind of towards the end of their career waiting to, to you know, they're usually in their late 40s ready to get on the champions tour, but they, and it, they use it as a way of being able to get to play every tournament. They may not get in a lot of tournaments, but they're, they get an exemption to play so they can see how the other players are, you know, the players are playing. So I was shocked to see Keegan. I saw Keegan at the, at the open and, and um, it hadn't been announced yet, but it, he seems so young to be the captain. I know we all know Tiger turned it down. Um, and, are you surprised uh, by that? I, I I was really because he likes, you know, he's been a, a co-captain before, so he's liked being vice captain or one of the ones. And I thought he, he'd be, you know, it might do it well. But he, knowing him, he likes to win. He might be looking at the team going, I don't know if my team's strong <laughs> enough and who's playing. Because there's a lot of players that are not going to play, I heard. Now, because of the rotation, you know, we had the Ryder Cup last year, but they're trying to get back on an even rotation. And so they're having it again. So I think that kind of helped. And I and I know that they they probably gave it to Keegan because they really didn't do the right thing by him last year by put, not putting him in the team. All right. So uh, the morning, uh, you mentioned already Rory in the morning, uh, and, and he's with uh, actually my top pick, uh, which is Terrell Hatton. So Rory's with Homa Hatton. Harmon, the defending champ, is with Hovland at the gala. Uh, Oberg, DeChambeau, Tom Kim. And then you also have Fleetwood, McIntyre, uh, and Rom. Uh, those are like the, the, the really good groups in the morning that might have to deal with the worst of the weather um, on Thursday morning and Friday afternoon. Also, Finau, uh, JT. JT and Emma are in the same group. Adam Scott is also in the morning. What do you think about uh, your country, uh, your countryman, Adam Scott, nearly uh, getting the win uh, last week, Jan, a couple days ago, but it was McIntyre that stole the show. Well, it's typical of Adam. You know, Adam's a terrible putter. I just, I, I know he puts better with the long putter, and, and he puts good on slow greens, and those greens were slow. And this this week they're going to be slow again. So he he's, he's best on slow greens with that, you know, with the broomstick. But if he could have putted, he would have won so many more tournaments. If he could have putted anywhere, you know, like the like you know, a Scheffler, well, not even. I mean, a Schauffele, it would have been all over because his golf swing is beautiful. You know, he hits the ball high, and he's, he he plays in any weather because he's played a lot in Europe, or played a lot in Australia in the wind. He would he would be a top choice. Um, if I just, I mean, he missed that. He didn't even go close to making that putt on the last. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, it uh, it actually looked for for a while that uh, most of the players down the stretch, Jared, uh, really, uh, you know, you could say they were choking or they were tense, 
But, I mean, you looked at it at some point, like at around hole 14, 13, and that final three or four groups were all like minus one. Ober, again to the day, at over three or whatever it was, which is terrible. Yeah. And he's he got a hard. major psychological issue right now in his head, holding yeah. leads in the final round of big events. And see, uh, dramatically, that happened so quickly because he just never seemed to be one of those guys that would have any issues. But see how quickly it happens? Yeah, and he, but he's still only 24 years old, and he's inexperienced as far as the PGA Tour goes. So I don't want to hold it against him too, too, too much. But the fact that he is, you know, consistently 12 to 1, 14 right. in one of these tournaments, like for me, if I, he's someone I'm going to bat, I do need to see him play a lot better when he's in contention on Sunday. So, so we'll see. You're right. I mean, it didn't seem to be an issue until Pinehurst, and then you know, Pinehurst was a disaster for him over the weekend, and then you know that I don't know if that spilled over into, into last week or what. So we'll we'll see how. Um, he fares going forward when he gets back in that spot. Yeah, and again, it was a, uh, and then all of a sudden, Adam Scott got hot, and then McIntyre got hot. So, and that was it because it was we were waiting for someone to get hot. It was like this is not a difficult golf course, and all of a sudden, Scott got hot, and then McIntyre just went unconscious uh, those last few holes. Uh, some people, Jan, I'm sure. Uh, they were, if, especially if they were Adam Scott fans or betters of other players, maybe even Adam Scott, probably not very happy with what happened to McIntyre, even though that, you know, as far as the whole, oh, I found the water sprinkler. And, and look, I completely believe that that was accidental. I don't think there's anything he's cheating or anything like that. But have you ever seen anything like that before? I mean, how lucky that was for him to, I mean, that was huge. If, if yeah, that doesn't was- happen, he probably doesn't win. Right. Yeah. You know, there, there's a lot of luck involved and, and he wanted it so badly. And I think everybody wanted it so badly for him. You know, that, that usually the, the local is going to have all the, you know, all the advantages. I'm, it was, I don't want to say it was a questionable call, but it was definitely a lucky break. Yeah. Do you think you know, a, lot of, a lot of other players now, uh, maybe this week, we'll start seeing them take these practice swings in the fescue? I'm going to take some practice <laughs> swings and see if I uncover anything. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So but you don't want to be in there anyway. Yeah, that's true. Uh, OK, by the way, and I, here's another thing that I was really surprised about, Jared. I was looking at the odds because I was thinking you know, cause I, about maybe hedging some bets because I had uh, three of them in contention to win. And I was saying, well, maybe can I can I hedge Oberg at all? His odds <laughs> were incredibly low. I mean, even after having just a one-stroke lead going into the weekend, he was minus 165. And he mm-hmm. never really got into the plus until, like, he, you know, he just started that maybe, I think, maybe right around. And I think even when I checked when he was even at one time on Sunday, his odds were mm-hmm. still minus. I couldn't understand it. I was like, why are there that many people putting money on him that they can't yeah, move be. him out of there? <laughs> But that was incredible. Um, but you know, it was very—it was almost impossible to hedge the bet with him because his odds were just so low. I mean, we've seen since he came on tour that the books don't want to get beat by by him, right? Like his odds are always—I think we've said it multiple times this year—just kind of lower than they probably should be. Not that he's not an awesome player because he is, but I'm not sure he deserves to be um, quite quite as heavily respected in the betting markets as he has been so far. Yeah, I I'm agree. Just, I'm popping up the odds right there so you can see. I mean, him. I took him too. I was I was shocked that he played so poorly. I did take him that week for the one and done, and I thought my odds. I I thought once he, there wasn't that many people that could beat him, but it, he beat himself. He only hit five yeah. fairways. All right, so I'm just gonna uh, show some more odds here. And there are a lot of really good bargains uh, this week, um, even though. Uh, history tells us that at the Open Championship, at least recently, you have to be a top player. So uh, before we go into that and our picks and stats and trends and all that, uh, the difference, Jan, anybody that wants to take a look what happened at last week at Renaissance and Troon, because uh, one trend, one stat or trend, you can put it whatever way you want. The fact is, is that not only is it important uh, to play the week before to win an Open Championship, but the last three winners have all played uh, the Scottish Open um, and then won the Open Championship. So that's why we're seeing uh, the Scottish Open become a really more prominent event 
uh, with the PGA Tour now sanct sanctioning it and so forth. So, um, so what do you think though about the course itself? Is it have any comparable whatsoever to World Tour? No, none at all. Except that it's in Scotland. <laughs> Okay. That's about it. So, uh, so what you're saying is, is don't. If anybody played really well at Renaissance, the only thing you could take out of it is they played Scottish Open. That's it. Don't take the golf course into into play. Right. Nothing. It's more. It, well, the only thing I can I can say that you get used to the weather, you get used to the slower greens, and you get used to the time change. Those are the three things that I take. As far as a golf course, Renaissance is a beautiful golf course, but it's more designed on the American style, which, you know, is totally different than European. And so it's, you know, the balls played more in the air, whereas in Scotland, typically, you know, the links courses, you've got to think about what's on the ground. And Troon is a typical, absolutely typical of that, of that kind of play. I remember when, um, when Tiger won and he was playing with Rod Pampling, a good friend of mine, and he's, his coach was there, well, he's my coach too, but, um, and Tiger had, I think he had Hank Haney with him and Tiger was all over the place. He was in every pot bunker and he was at the practice round and was just having such problems. And, um, and we all said that the only way that Tiger could play this golf course was to hit his stinger, to take that two iron and hit it low and keep it away from the pot bunkers because in, in most time, a fairway bunker is, it just is a way to test your skill yeah. to get to the green 90% yeah. of the time, depending on your lie. You know, unless you're under a lip or something, you're not going to bury. But at Troon, the pot bunkers are so tiny that they're, they remind me of, you know, like at, um, the, uh, at Royal and Ancient, you know, like that one on 17. I mean, you get in it and, and it's basically chipping out. So it's worse than being in the fescue because you can't hit it more than... 50 yards if you're lucky and so the, whoever comes it's a totally different golf course to renaissance yeah. because you're playing it on the ground so you're looking at not you know as much as the wind but you've got to keep it away from from pop bunkers i mean even last year when when Harmon won he was actually hitting it short enough that he was getting short of the bunkers and so he didn't have to worry about placing his tee shots as much and that was a huge advantage and the same as this one you know, and you've you know, I've looked at Jared's stats. I mean, Aaron Rye is a good one because he hits a lot of fairways and he plays a lot in Europe. I don't, depending on the weather and how long they set the course up, that he can stay away from those bunkers because so those pot bunkers are deadly. Okay. Uh, talk about the weather then. Talk about which, uh, Jared. Uh, are there any players? Because you, you you mentioned this last week, which is why I was uh, a little bit surprised. Matter of fact, I'm gonna pop up our picks here as as we go through this. But I was a little bit surprised that uh, your top pick is Morikawa, only because last week when I picked him as my top pick, you did talk about the weather being potentially a factor. Yet the weather was not a factor last week, and yet and now we're looking at the weather this week as potentially being a factor. Even though the wind is not going to yeah. be a big issue, it will be there. And we will have rain and we will have more conditions this week. So are there any players that you would be concerned with regarding how the, the, the whole, uh, you know, weather forecast and uh, how that's going to come into play? Yeah, you know, I actually have this info right now, I haven't really factored it in yet because I don't, we don't know how bad the wind's going to be. But like if we get to Wednesday night again, if it does look like it's going to be windy, I can just, you know, click this button on fantasy national and i can start to factor in weather but you know if i just look so by the way my i think my morikawa take with him in the wind is kind of become outdated because i i looked into this again for this coming week and he's actually been quite a bit better lately in the wind i looked at the last 24 rounds in windy conditions and he's actually 13th best in this field um ball striking which is you know strokes gain off the team strokes gain approach so he's gotten better in the wind the players who are not good in the wind like near the top of the board bryson has been a, a poor wind player um let's see who else here i mean again you know mo most of the top players fare fine in the wind ludwig actually has not been a good wind player he kind of yeah he hits the ball awfully high that's that was another thing last week once he got it yep. started going crooked he hits it so high you can't control it who's leading in that category the top player ball striking is victor hovland 
It's Vic- Victor Hovland, Corey Connors, John Rama, your top three best best wind players. Yeah, let me. Uh... Actually, John Rama is a good wind player. That's true. What's uh? Um... What about Tony Fino? Yeah, he's he's always up there. He's a good wind player. He's seventh on my list here. I like Tony Finau because he's um, strong enough. I think he can get over most of those pot bunkers, but he, um, he he's not a good fast putter, you know, on fast greens, and the greens are mm-hmm. quite slow. They're only running 11 right now. The uh, stats uh, that I've just been uh, flashing here, Jared, uh, we've got top 10 strokes gain per round at the – uh, open since 2018, and one of my picks is at the top, Cameron Young. So wow. uh, there's wow. uh, one of your picks, Morikawa, <laughs> at seven. Uh, yeah. By the way, Hovland is there at three. Talk about this one, Jared. The strokes gain per yep. round at the Open. Yep. Yeah, just as echo what it sounds like. This is um, <laughs> it's the last six years. It's only five. It's only five Opens because we missed. Uh, was it 2020? For COVID, but it's so it's the last five open strokes gained per round. Uh, you know, a lot of a lot of guys who have won this term, and obviously you know, Harmon, Morikawa, Lowry. But um, so some other interesting ones. So, you know, Tom Tom Kim. I was on him last week. He's been a good links player so far in his career. Victor Hovland's been awesome at the Open so far. Hasn't really contended to win, but he's had a bunch of top fifteen. So that, that's your list of just who's been best at this tournament over the last five go arounds. And then, of course, I've also got the. You also have the strokes gain total at the majors. That is just this year. Uh, you yep. see Morikawa there, your top pick uh, at number three. Uh, Dietrich's not playing this week, right? Yeah, he is playing. Okay, I'm, I, I don't know if sure I should be. I don't know why I didn't see his eyes no. up there. I must have missed him. Uh, yeah, open. You might, you might be. You might be right, Greg. You might not. Yeah, he's not. He's not in the field. He's well, not. he must be hurt. What about me? No, he's fine. He played last week. I just think that it's one of those things. I mean, he, yeah. I mean, you know how every major, if you look, he hasn't won yet. You know, every major is different as far as how, who they allow in and who they don't. Yeah. I'm surprised though, because he plays on the DP tour is worth so much that I would have thought he'd had some kind of ranking, but he he actually hasn't played on the DP tour at all this year. He's been all PGA tour this year. Hmm. That's probably why. You know, yeah. he's uh, and he's done well at the majors too, which is uh, again part of the stats you just said the strokes gain in the majors. Uh, the last stat, yeah. by the way, top 10 fairways gained that's Aaron Rye, as you see at the top two, uh, actually, Morikawa once again. So, Morikawa being on this list, on these lists, no surprise then why he's your top pick, Jared. Yeah, yeah, and I think as you know, as Jan alluded to, talking about the pop bunkers, and I, I, I was even uh, watching a podcast last night from a couple guys who were at the course on Monday, and they were saying the fescue also looks super punishing. Like you, you're going to see guys lose balls in the fescue. So I think you know, I mean, you're you're going to want to hit it long here. I mean, that distance is always important off the tee, but I, I think accuracy is going to be key off the tee this week. I think you're going to be you're going to want guys finding fairways. So these are basically the 10 most accurate drivers so far. And you, you know, it's a lot of, a lot of these guys would be guys to maybe bet, you know, top 20, top 40, you know, to me, some, someone like Aaron Rye, I would not bet to win this week, but as a top 20 bet probably makes a lot of sense. Same goes for me when, you know, someone like Russell Henley, Siwoo Kim, but you do have Morikawa second on this list. Sepp Straka fourth on this list. I mean, he has had a good season and came second in last year's open. He could be an interesting long shot bet, long shot bet. Um, Tommy Fleetwood's on this list as well. So there are some of the, um, you know, bigger names that show up here as the most accurate drivers in the field. Well, and plus I think Scotty Scheffler is, you know, has trouble in the rain, as you know, I remember PGA two mm-hmm. years ago when he kept slipping in the rain because if he's got, you know, his foots um, in the way his feet move um, and he, and if he missed and if he slips, he hits it left. And so, you know, again, he might be able to get away with it kind of like, you know, at the open, if you get lucky in the fescue, cause it's kind of patchy. Mm-hmm. But um, I still think, you know, hitting fairways and greens when weather's bad and when the mate, when you're in a major, it's, that's huge. And the greens are fast. I mean, it's slow. So, um, you know, if you get it on the green, you, you don't have to worry about a lot of three putts. You can kind of be pretty aggressive. So t- fairways and greens are it's big this, yeah. this week. So even though Scotty has uh, three top 25s and three open appearances, just one top 10, no top fives. And... Uh, his results have actually been uh, getting worse 
since his eighth place finish three years ago, 21st and then 23rd. Um, just going over some trends to keep an eye on. May Americans have just been dominating lately. Uh, they actually had won six straight at Royal Troon until Henrik Stenson's win in 2016. And now the Americans, of course, are on a run of six straight major wins. So uh, we'll see if that could be broken up this week. Um, oh, I, I got to ask you guys. Uh, so how about this? Uh, Tiger Woods, last player to win the Masters and the Open the same year, back in 05. McElroy, last player to win PGA, Open, same year. That was 2014. Watson, last player to win U.S. Open, Open, same year, 82. It's been a long time, so DeChambeau is really against it. Which one of the three major winners this year do you think has the best chance to win this week? Jan. Uh, Bryson. Wow, really? Okay. Yeah, even though even though he uh, mm. doesn't do well in the wind and he hits the ball high, and mm -hmm. but I think... Uh, I think he's just so motivated right now and he's really playing happy. You know, like Nancy Lopez says, there's nothing like playing happy. If you're happy, you're, you're, you, you know, it gives you a really good attitude when, when you're, when you've got your rain jacket on and off and you're, you don't want to be there because it's uncomfortable and it's cold. When you're happy, it does make a difference. Okay. Uh, Jared. I, I mean, I would, I would have to go Scotty Scheffler. <laughs> I, I mean, I think it's, I, I think it's talking about course where you want to hit fair raising greens. Like, I mean, that's, that's, that's Scotty Scheffler. That's a good point. Okay. Now, uh, what about you, Greg? Uh, let's see. So it's Scheffler, Deshambo, and Shoffley. Um, yep. You know, I I I'd, I'd go with Scheffler. I mean, I just I, I have a hard time uh, going against him in any situation. Um, I just don't know about the uh Like again, you've noticed a few of those um, I, issues, but he also yeah. does not have a great resume uh, at Open Championship play. He's 15 yeah. over par yeah. in his career. He also six. he also didn't have a he didn't have a great resume at Augusta until this year so i mean he's he's definitely fair i'm just i'm curious to see how bryson plays this course because i yeah, think if he too. tries to bomb it all over the place he's going to get in trouble but I, I i feel like he's uh matured a bit as a golfer over the you know past year where he might uh you know play it smarter here hit more irons off the tee or whatever just to keep it in play i agree if we're just betting i would take the shampoo out of this three because you're getting 18, yeah, 18 to one. Yeah, eighteen to one's not bad. It's yeah, not bad. Instead of putting money at five to one on Sheffield, because I don't, I don't really like Scotty this week. Uh, as great as he's played this year, which is another I... thing, Jan, that we've been talking about is it, he doesn't win this week. All of a sudden, it's like, all right, well, it's nice you've won a couple of Masters, but can you win any other majors? I mean, you got to start winning some other majors to be considered a great player. Oh, he's definitely going to win more majors. I mean, you know, I, I. I... I shouldn't have taken him for. I think back now after watching him practice at um, the Open, I shouldn't have taken him at Pinehurst because that isn't a good golf course for him. Because again, it's kind of kind of Scottish linksy, and he doesn't do great on those. But uh, I should have taken him. He, I could have taken him in, in about four or five weeks, and it would have been <laughs> fine. But it's not a. His his game is a very American game. In the air, you know, he's a great chipper of the ball. Hits a lot of fairways and greens. Hits the ball really high. He doesn't do well in bad weather. All right. Uh, some other uh, important stats or trends. The last 11 winners, and again, this is what I was talking about. you got to be a really top-ranked player to win here. The last 11 all ranked in the top 40 at the start of the event. Uh, matter of fact, the average world ranking in the last 10 is 13.1. Uh, Jordan was the highest during that stretch, third ranked in 2017. Shane Lowry, the lowest, 33rd in 2019. So uh, they have ranged from uh, 3 to 33 over the last 10. Uh, matter of fact, Darren Clark is the last winner who was not ranked in the top 100. That was back in 2011. Uh, there are a couple of players that are trying to uh, simulate what Koram did in 2021, trying to win here for the very first time. Uh, Oberg is one of those players. So he's never played an Open Championship, and he's clearly the best player 
uh, that has never played. So he really is 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 the one that's carrying the mantle there to try to uh, equal what Coram, Colin Morikawa did uh, by winning in his very first Open Championship. Um, and then uh, also keep in mind, uh, Jordan Spieth was the last player to win in the event prior, even though that was Travelers. He had a whole month in between, but uh, that was back in 2017. Mickelson's the last player to win the event prior, which was the Scottish Open. So he won the Scottish Open in 2013. The very next week, he won the Open Championship. Um, and uh, I forget where that was. Where was that? Was that that was one of the battles with Stenson, right? In 2013. I don't remember. Was that, was that a Mir Mirfield? Oh, was it a Mirfield? Uh, also important to note that 10 of the last 12 first-time winners earned at least one win in the same year uh, before winning. Four of those, uh, uh, four of the last nine, excuse me, have two wins prior. But Brian Harmon, keep in mind, did not have a win last year. So uh, he kind of broke that trend a little bit. The last nine first-time winners have an average of 7.6 appearances. Again, that's the last nine. They've ranged from... First appearance being Morikawa to 12th. So uh, that's 7.6 average over the last nine. And last one to note, Ben Curtis was the last player to make the British Open their maiden PGA Tour win. Matter of fact, Ben Curtis had never won a professional event of any kind uh, before winning the Open Championship. Was that the, uh, the, the biggest long shot, Jan, that has ever won a major in your mind? God, it sounds like it. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, every sometimes you'll have, you know, you used to be. We always talked about sometimes the U.S. Open, the U.S.J. would trick the horse up so much. You'd have someone that would never be able to win again, or win, or you know, win one tournament and that was it. And but um, on the PGA Tour, Ben Curtis would be one of them. All right, so uh, it's time to. And it's usually when that happens, it's like they coming down the stretch. There would probably two or three big names that were there and they screwed up and then the person slips in and wins. Yeah, that is usually Todd, the way it is. Todd, Todd Hamilton won here. I think he was like 250 to one or something. Wow. I don't know. I don't know what Ben Curtis's odds were, but Hamilton had to be one of the bigger long shots, right? Yes, absolutely. He beat Ernie Els that year. I, I believe I think it was a Hamilton Els yep. kind of uh, battle. Uh, so yeah, absolutely. Um, Okay, so as far as uh, holes, I mentioned a couple of them uh, before I started. The railway and the posted stamp. These are two of the more famous ones. Matter of fact, Jan, the railway, the 11th hole, is considered one of the toughest par fours in the world. Um, I'm going to pop up a little bit of a video regarding that hole here in a sec. Why don't you talk a little uh, about that hole? How, how far are they playing it? It's so yeah. So they added 200 yards to this course since uh, the the Stenson when um, 16 of those yards went to number 11. So I I see it listed as 498 yards. For par four. Par four. So, yeah. so what we so we got to figure out which way the wind is. No one if that's against the wind or a side cross. It's almost worse if it's crosswind because they have to keep it on you know keep it under the wind and control it. So. It, mm -hmm. I can see why, and of course the green, obviously, as the, the the name said, it's got a tiny little green, so it's hard to get up and down. So it's basically a par five. I think it is a par five in the in the real in the and mm -hmm. for the amateurs, and it doesn't look that much to play it, but you can see, isn't that the railroad? Yep, one? that's the railroad. Oh, okay. Um, the it, it it's just. The green looks so little when you're playing back there, and now they're going to be hitting in long irons if they're lucky, and depending on the wind. I mean, you're going to be coming in there with, you know, metal woods of some kind. But obviously, I mean, look how heavy that gorse is. That's mm -hmm. that's a pretty tough hole. I mean, it is very wide a fairway. When you look at it, it is quite wide. But you still, when you're coming in with a wood, you don't want to even be in the, in the like, rough. Yeah, so this and is, see that bunker on the left. If you get in that, that bunker is a lot deeper than it looks. It, I bet it it's a six. Foot, that bunker probably goes down six feet, and it's a narrow green. And and look how close the out of bounds is on the right. Yeah. 
So it's one of those holes that, you know, you, it's a hole you might even want to lay up on because of the out of bounds there. And there's going to be a lot of green people that miss it left because they can't afford for it to go right. A lot's going to depend on the wind too. I didn't, I didn't confirm this, but that podcast I was listening to last night, uh, the guys were saying Jack Nicholas made a 10 on this hole. <laughs> one of the years I was here. So. Yeah, I bet he hit it out of bounds with the bing because he hits it left to right. Uh, the eighth right. hole is called the posted stamp. It's 123 yards, and it's a, f a famous uh, hole, uh, short hole. Um, and I guess the, the, they have it because I guess the nickname comes from the posted stamp size green. Uh, they also have five bunkers. Let's go ahead and take a look here. Jan, talk a little bit about this posted well, it's stamp. The, it's the same distance as seven at Pebble, which, you know, people have always said they, they've, some people have hit a wedge because it's going downhill. So the ball does all kinds of crazy things. And none oh, of those bunkers. Look at that. Look at the bunker on the left. Mm -hmm. That bunker on the top and the left, the one that's pin high, that is really, if you get in that, you can't get up and down. And so um, it's it's one of those ones where you may only have a wedge in. It's just like at TPC at Sawgrass and at you know 17 there, and the same at seven at Pebble. You you just have to get it on the green because it's not a hole that you can get up and down on them. If they play with the pin at all and get it close to those bunkers, you know because the way it is right now, it looks like the flag is in the middle. So mm -hmm. if you're pin high. You, you can't get up and down if you're in those bunkers, especially the one on the left because it's downhill because you can't see that the actual, the green sh slopes left to right. Okay. So is there a hole here that is like a guaranteed four? Oh. I mean, a, a bunker, I should say. That's a guaranteed four. Like you get in this oh. bunker, forget it. You're just. If you're in that, if you're in that bunker on the left, the one that's on the hill. This one? Yeah. You're on a downhill slope. It's it's deep, okay. and obviously if you're in the one in the back too, the one, one in the back right, but a lot's going to depend yep. on the wind, and you know because yep. they're coming in with a wedge and they're having to hit. Depending on, a lot depends on the wind. That that left I mean, bunker looks like a it, looks like a coffin. The perfect place to hit it is is just front right and just two putt and get out of there. You know, it's like all the it's like all those little short par threes. It's just. It shouldn't be a hard hole because you've got a wedge in your hand. It, you know, it's kind of like um, 12 at, at Augusta. I mean, there, it's a nothing hole. But if you hit it in the wrong place, you're having a big number. Is that you, Jan? Yeah, somebody. All right. So, picks. Jared, uh, I've already – everybody has seen our picks. So I've, uh, I'll pop up the pick ticker once again so everybody can see it. So uh, Jared is going with Morikawa, Kepka, Cantley, Fiena, Batia. I'm going with Hatton, Clark, Young, M, Scott, and I throw in a couple of $5 long shots in Burmester. And, of mm -hmm. course, I have to put in Montessero. By the way, I have to ask you, I know you've never seen Montessero play before, and he really had a good uh, showing. Yeah. Um, he was even number one going into Sunday. What was he number one for? I forget. Was it Tita Green, I believe? Yeah, um, I think so. Yep. Was there anything about his game uh, that you noticed? I don't know if you looked at any stats or anything in particular since you've never really seen him play before because, again, by, when he was starting out when he was 17, 18, and he was like a superstar or a superstar to be, uh, that was, um, you know, almost 15 years ago. So yep. um, anything you noticed about his game that uh, intrigued you? Yeah, he uh, he was second in the field last week, strokes gain approach. Number one was actually Shubankar Sharma. as a name I haven't heard in a long time. Um, yeah, I, I caught a little Montessori. Looks like an excellent ball striker, and I know he's just—he's. I know he's been playing well on the DP World Tour. So, um, you know, I wouldn't—I'd be shocked if he won this week, but definitely could be an interesting uh, top twenty, top forty bet. Okay, so uh, let's go down our picks, and we've already talked about Morikawa. Uh, my top pick is Hatton, and um, he has really started to up his game on Live. Uh, this, this is the best golf that he's played this year. 
And uh, I also like the fact that when I, when, when I looked and found out that he played here, uh, the last time they played at Troon, he finished fifth. Um, I was already taking him, but that was just a, a Rachuri on top. That that was one of his best ever. Might, might actually be his best ever major finish. Uh, fifth at Troon, uh, the last time they played here. Um, and, uh, yeah, and if he's going to win a major, you do get the feeling that it's got to be an open championship. He would just feel a lot more comfortable. He's such a stressed out kind of, you know, player that um, anyway, the one thing I don't like are the odds. I don't like him down at 25. It's a little low for me, yep. but anyway, what do you think about Hatton? Well, he, well I love Hatton his golf swing. The, yeah, go, go ahead, Jen. Uh, I, I love his golf swing. So I'm glad to see that he's starting to play well. I feel like he would have done the same thing on the PGA tour. He was kind of just breaking through. So he's he's a good pick. He's a little bit. The odds are not quite what he should be, but he's yeah. definitely got the game for it. Uh, pick number two each: uh, Kepka for Jared and Clark for me. Kepka forty to one. Clark sixty to one. So you're going back to Kepka, uh, Jared. I think you've taken him a couple times already in majors this year, right? Uh, yes, I had him at PGA and US Open, I believe. Um, yeah, I just forty to one on Brooks Kepka at a major. Maybe I'm still living in twenty twenty three, and he's not the same guy. <laughs> you know, he's obviously been underwhelming at majors this year. But I mean, he ha- he obviously hasn't won the Open, but he has three top six finishes. Um, and you know, Br- Brooks he started his career on. I know he played the Challenge Tour over in Europe, which is like you know yep. their version of the Corn Fair. Then he was on the the uh, Euro Tour for a year or two. So he definitely obviously you know has plenty of, uh, of experience I, he's obviously not coming in in top form but again 40 to one kind of factors that in I think he's worth a shot uh, and then uh, my second pick uh, being uh, Clark again 60 to one um, I, I'm not sure I would be as ex- as interested in taking taking him until uh, he played really well on Sunday and I thought I that agree. was very important in considering we talked about how it looked like his game was getting close because he has had a pretty bad summer to this part or even spring. And he finally woke up a couple of events ago, followed that up last week. So I think this is good timing now, especially again, the main thing for me is just the odds, Jan. If he's 20 to one, 30 to one, forget it, but I'm getting 60 to one with Clark. Well, that's a good one. Well, I'm going with Cam Smith. I think, uh, but that's pretty good odds. And and you know else that we haven't talked about is um, Matsuyama. I mean, Matsuyama plays in a lot of rain. <laughs> he, it, it's in, in Japan, you, you play in a lot of rain. So because it rains there a lot. <laughs> so he's good in the rain. Yeah, Cam, of course. Uh, the interesting thing about Cam Smith is that if you throw out his win a couple of years ago, uh, he which he was 20 under par. In that win, he is combined 17 over par in the five other Open Championships. But I'm assuming with you liking him this week that you think, what, the course is more in line to fitting his game like it was a couple of years ago? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't fit it as well as this Royal and Ancient because Royal and Ancient, yeah, you have the pot bunkers, and it's but it's pretty wide open, and he has that hook. Um, sometimes he gets that hook going. And, um, and he's got a brilliant short game. But what he does that a lot of the Americans don't have is that he has a short game because he's played in Europe and played in Australia where we have ridiculous amount of wind. He has really good imagination. He doesn't have to have it. You know, if it's really windy, he can get it. He can keep it down and chip mm-hmm. it on the, along the surface. They're getting better at it. Over, uh, in the Americans are getting a lot better at it. But I still think that his short game can keep him in there um, this is a golf course. It's not quite the same as, as Royal and Ancient, but it's 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 less it, it's less American. So I think he's good. I mean, he's he can control if he can control the pot bunkers. He can control. He's really good around the greens here because he can get out of those pot bunkers like I've never seen anyone be able to spin it like he can out of those bunkers. Mm-hmm. All right, Jared and I are third picks. Uh, Jared went with Cantlay. I went with uh, Cam Young. Um, I just decided with Cam Young, same reason as Clark. Uh, he's trending now finally back in the right direction. 
uh, as far as his game is concerned. I know he's he's sort of like uh, Oberg now, uh, the way Oberg is is really can say he's more like Young now, uh, where he might be mm-hmm. choking a little bit uh, with that first win, but he seems to really uh, take the take to these Open Championship venues. So I think combined with the fact that. Uh, he's played really well here at the Open Championship, and his game looks like it's trending in the right direction. I thought he's worth a shot at fifty to one. Uh, you you went with a surprise uh, pick, even though Cantley did uh, register an eighth a couple of years ago. Um, we've talked about it. Cantley is not very good in majors overall, but he did have his best major result, I believe, or at least it looked like it was his best major result uh, yep. in the last major at the U.S. Open. Yeah, I, I like that he just finally got in the mix. And I know a lot, a lot of times, and I was even looking back at the you know recent winners at the Open, a lot of times the winner ends up being a guy who was in the mix at one of the first three majors of the year. So I like that Cantley got the experience. He followed that up with a fifth place at the Traveler. So he is definitely playing his best golf of the season. And I don't think that's reflected in the odds at 40 to 1. I mean, right, this is a guy who would have been, you know, 18 or 20 to 1. A year ago so if he is you know back into form i think it's a pretty good number i i hate that he's playing with tiger that's um, the problem you know, if I were, yeah if i were to do this again you know after seeing the tea times i'm not sure i would have gone with cantley but you know so i i do think 40 to one is a nice playing with I mean, tiger. He, he, he can just yeah just survive those first two days with tiger and then, then yeah they, the they always say it's a two-shot <laughs> disadvantage to be paired with tiger um sure. so you know if if he can overcome that and plus you know he's got and it might help that he's got Cat, Tiger's old caddy. Maybe he can control the gra- the crowd a little bit better, but I doubt it. That's yeah, interesting that Cantley and Shoffley together. We, we've always kind of put those guys almost like the same. But hey, maybe that's a good sign for Cantley because Shoffley just got over to home well, winning a major. Yeah, and they are and, and they are good buddies. So hopefully yeah. that helps. That's true. That's true. They'll be able to kind of console each other when Tiger starts walking off when they're still trying to putt. <laughs> uh, our fourth picks. Uh, Jared went with Finau at 35 to one. I went with, uh, Sung J M at 60 to one. And, uh, I went with Sung J M. I believe it was the PGA championship. Uh, and then he, I, I believe he missed the cut. So, but since then he's actually sort of playing better again. So the problem with him is he's not played well at majors this year. That's the problem. But he does look like he's just close. I mean, he's trending the right way at the Open Championship. He's gotten better all three years there. He's also trending in the right direction after a fourth place finish last week. Um, and you're getting 60 to 1. So, yeah. So, I think him, maybe this is a good time for him. But uh, you decided to go with Finau uh, and uh, another player that's really kind of been struggling. I mean, if you take out wins at some easy golf courses the last couple of years, uh, he really hasn't. He had that one win in the playoffs, I believe, uh, three years ago. Maybe it was the first no, playoff won, round. Or was that window? He, he won Mexico, too. No, they, uh, that's what I was saying. Yeah. He won easy events. But the. Yeah, he won. He won yeah, that. It was like Liberty. Was it? It was like Liberty National. Yeah, I think so. It was by New York City. Yeah. Yeah, yeah um, that's a great golf course. I love that course. So why this week with Finau? Yeah, I mean, whether Finau can actually win is always the question. And, man, I, I'd kind of broken my – because I used to bet this guy at majors all the time five, five six years ago. I kind of broken my Finau habit, but I'm, I'm back. I mean, he <laughs> he hasn't won, but he is playing excellent. I mean, 18th at the PGA, 17th at Charles Schwab, 8th at Memorial, 3rd at the U.S. Open, 5th at Travelers talked about the fact that he's a good win player. Jan mentioned that he's not a good putter on fast greens. These will not be fast greens. I actually looked at who the best putters are on slow greens for this week. Finau's 41st on that list. So not bad, but 41st for Finau is good, right? Like if he can putt above average, his ball striking has been good enough to potentially win this thing. And he, he does have a good open record. Um, So, and if, if there's one major where like an older guy, is going to win who maybe seems like you know past his prime it tends to be the open so i think this this could be a good spot for tony well i i love female swing and he's hitting it so long right now that um he's really swinging well and you know and this is a chance you know he's, he's a pretty good bunker player so that part of it you know you have, look at those deep bunkers you have around the green you don't have a lot of them like you do in america but when you get in and you better be you know they're not like easy shots to get out 
And it's different kind of sand over there. The sand's heavier, so you don't spin it as well. But I think Tiger, I mean, I think Fino's got a chance over here in Europe. Fino has six top 30s and seven open championship appearances with two top 10s, one top five. And he was 18th at Troon the last time they played there. So all good signs for Tony Finau this week. Our fifth picks, uh, Jared, you went with Batia, uh, looking for that big breakout. He's at 125, so he's your official long shot, of course. And uh, I went with uh, Adam Scott as my fifth choice. Um, I just like the fact that he's still getting a good number at 60 to 1. Uh, he's never won an Open Championship. I'm sure he feels like he's owed one. He let one slip away, as we all know. So, um, you know, maybe this is a great timing for him. Uh, I, I think we've talked about this the, the last couple of years. Just feel like there's one more big win in Adam Scott's career. That wouldn't have been last week. So maybe it could be this week. If not, look, he's still only 43 years old. He's not 50. He's got more than enough time to, to get one more major win. So, uh, Jan, what, I know uh, you're, you're a big Scott uh, fan, of course. So what do you think about his chances this week? I actually like his chances a lot. The greens are slow. He's a, he's like Tony, that they don't do well on five screens. You know that the only problem with with you know if you look at last week, he left so many putts short in the heart, and he only, you know, and then missed that one on on eighteen. I mean, he really threw it away. He threw his chance away to win another. Uh, Scottish Open is considered a major on the GP tour, so he he really screwed up, and and he knows that you could tell, and but. Um, I, I like it because the, he can control his golf ball, and and uh, he's got a he's got a good short game, except for his putting. I mean, it's it's good enough. He's again played enough in Europe that he can get the ball on the ground if he has to. And then, uh, as far as our long shots again, Jared went with Batia. I went with Burmester and Montesero. So uh, talk about Batia. Why why particularly this week that you figured you'd you'd you know roll the dice on him as a long shot. Yeah, I mean, it's, for starters, the number on just a guy I think is super talented that I do think is going to win a major at some point in his career. Like, I, I think by next year we could be talking about Akshay as like a top 10 player on the tour. So I'm just kind of trying to get out ahead of it. He's obviously had an awesome season. He cooled off after winning Valera, but he's trending back in the right direction now. 22nd at Memorial, 16th at the U.S. Open, and then his last two starts, 5th at Travelers, 2nd at Rock, Rock and Mortgage. Obviously, you know, missed, missed the, the short putt that would have sent yeah. it to a – playoff um yeah. you know he'd be snapping a lot of trends by winning as such a young player in his first open um again i think you know at, at 100 to 1 125 to 1 um i think I, i'm willing to take a shot on that oh he probably I just don't, how's he going to be with a rain jacket on we have to worry about that because a lot of those little you know he's pretty tiny <laughs> and yeah, um, blow away. when you put your sweater and a rain jacket on it is so confining it's the horrible feeling i used absolutely yeah. hated playing over in Europe because of that. You had to, you know, pack different clothes and, yeah. and, and if you, you know, he's grown up in the warm weather and it's really, it's hard. I, I, I never really, I didn't really, well, I mean, I, when I won over in Europe, I won the warm weather. I won in the Moroccan open and the French open. So I didn't win the British. And so, because I hated being cold and wet. So there's a huge difference when you put that cashmere sweater on, long underwear and and then a rain jacket it is really hard to play and i don't know if he's used to that well uh he's going to try to do what uh morikawa did a few years ago mm -hmm. uh and win on his first try um and that he's was, a he's a good well, he's a good win good player too they had good weather that year that week too yeah they did yep. yeah and keep in mind you talked about him missing that putt that, at rocket mortgage i mean he had that event all sewn up he allowed Cam Davis, who was playing aggressive as well as he should, trying to catch up. And uh, Batia had basically the lead for four days and then just decided yeah. to get just all like, like play, he played the final day like the U.S. Open. Let me just par my way to victory. Uh, and then he missed that short putt. So I do wonder about his psyche just a little bit because we know it could turn on a dime, just like Oberg uh, trying to close. Uh, we'll see what happens. By the way, speaking of short putts, did you see Lahiri's short putt miss at the live yes, on Sunday? Oh, yes. Did you, Jared? I, I, I was shocked. I was happy. Yeah. I was happy that um, I, I was happy to see the win in Spain. You know, from the Sergio, the, the Sergio. But no Sergio this week at the Open Championship. That's pretty sad. 
No Sergio. Wait, he's not in it? No. At least, oh, wow. at least we got Louis. We got Louis though. Yeah, we do. We, Louis, we do have Louis Ustase. So. Yes, he's definitely somebody that uh, I think I've, I've mentioned. I put a future on him, uh, so I already have a future on him this week. I think he's eighty to one or something like that. Um, so yeah, before we go, uh, any long shots uh, that you were thinking about, Jared, uh, that uh, you might throw a buck on, yes. or you would advise maybe some uh, some crazy uh, betters like me that like to throw like <laughs> ten one dollar yeah. bets on long shots. Yep, there. Yeah, there are a few guys right here showing that I considered. Uh, Nikolai Hoigard, I consider just a good late yep. player. Was playing well uh, last week until yes, Sunday. Yes, he was. I think Sepp Straka is interesting, just the year he's had and the fact that he was second last year. I think I think Sam Burns at 125. I mean, I know we oh, talked Sam about Burns. his struggles in majors, but he, he, he was in the mix over the weekend at Pinehurst and 125 to 1. And then Will Zalatoris, I'll probably throw a couple of <laughs> You on love Will. At, at 150 to 1. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Just, just just out of respect for Will, I might throw a few on him. I was surprised yeah. Pavon uh, missed the cut last week. But yeah. uh, let's, let's see if he can pick it up this week at 150 to 1. Justin Rose has been playing awful. He's 200 to 1, Jan. Uh, yeah. Anybody else here, long shots that uh, you throw a buck on? I, I, I like right now, I'm liking. Um, well, I can't believe that Tiger's that bad, that bad down there. Let me see. I like um, – God, I can't remember his, 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 his name. Um, the guy that won, won the Australian Open. The, um, oh, Neiman? Neiman. Oh, he ain't no long shot. Neiman is – what shot? is he, 60 to 1, 80 50. to 1, something like that? Yeah, that's 50 or 60. 50 to 1 right here, 50 to 1. Oh, okay. That's too no. – yeah. You're not gonna, by the way, uh, Mickelson, I was looking at Mickelson, and uh, keep in mind that even though I think his uh, major days are over, uh, he is like 500 to 1 or 400 to 1, <laughs> and uh, he, he does have a second and a third at Troon. So he's played wow. really well at Troon. Um, and uh, matter of fact, I think Troon might be, besides the, the one he won, Troon might be his best open championship venue statistically. So keep that in mind. Uh, if you're looking for some uh, really crazy long shots. And uh, uh, and I think that's pretty much uh, going to wrap it up. So anything well, else? Well, you figure Mateo is going to have a good tournament. I hope so. I think he's got to get off to a good start. The only thing is, as we close out here, just keep in mind, uh, as far as our picks, again, if they hold up, PM, AM is what you're looking for. And for our picks, um, we have Young, Cameron Smith, Morikawa, Cantley, Kepka, and Clark in the PM AM slot. Um, in our picks in the in the bed uh, slots, we have Hatton, Finau, Mateo, and Sung J M. So, and the rest of them are kind of in the in between deal. So, um, yeah. Oh, and also Batia. Batia is in the PM AM grouping. Okay. So, uh, we'll see how that works. Again, we're gonna have links in the description for uh the windfinder.com and i and i think we're also uh I, I believe i'm also going to be able to put a link in the description for a few other things um i'll try to put a, a link in the description for royal troon so you can check out the holes because we only showed you two of them so I'll, I'll put a link in the description you can check out all 18 uh they're on twitter uh by the way if you want to order peacock you can get the early round, sort of like ESPN Plus. No ESPN Plus this week. So you got Peacock between 1.30 and uh, uh, 4 a.m. And then 3 or 4 p.m., um, which I don't know what that's about. But the 1.30 to 4 a.m. slot just on Thursday and Friday. Other than that, it's all USA Network. Picking it up at 4 a.m. Eastern until 3 p.m. 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. over the weekend and they also by the way usa network will pick it up early in the morning at 5 and 4 a.m on saturday and sunday so jan appreciate it glad to have you back again i uh, yeah, hope everything's going uh, well for you thank you i'm and, gonna go hit balls uh, yes you go do that no oh, that's nice and jared uh thanks as always uh we'll talk uh, in the next yep. couple of weeks thanks Thanks, Greg. Great to see Good you luck. guys. Good luck to speak, yes, yep. absolutely. Thank you. Thank, great to see you. And also just to remind everybody to subscribe, like, and share. And we'll see you next time here on Tee Off with Jan Stevenson.